Record. All right. So, uh, welcome to the resource one setting up the development environment tutorial. I am going to take us through how to install a virtual box on our machines. I can't do anything about the fact that I have a Mac and I know only a few of you have Macs. Most of you are on PCs. Um, so, uh, it's similar, is my understanding, the installation on, on a, a PC, but it will install VirtualBox, and then inside VirtualBox, we should all have the same look and feel, and then I'll uh, show how to install Ubuntu Bionic 18.04.4, LTS, sorry, I sent out before instructions that said it was 16. Um, it is Ubuntu with Bionic. I just didn't have it's Bionic Beaver is the name of it. Um, so I just had the number wrong. Uh, great. So here is um, the VirtualBox installation first. So we'll do that one first. Uh, and if you guys have questions along the way, I want you guys to be following along. If you have questions along the way, please ask, and I'm happy to pause things and just help you guys debug um we can also try you guys sharing your screens with me too and i can actually like see what you're doing so we're gonna give that a shot the full virtualization full um tutorial help session so all right virtual box is first um it's a free virtualizer and so what we're gonna do, I'm gonna assume most of you guys are probably on PCs and you have Windows um, installed and we are gonna want to install our robot operating system, ROS, into uh, Ubuntu instead of natively on Windows. Um, that's the sort of recommended operating system to be working with is Ubuntu. Uh, so that's what we will install as a virtual machine on your um, PCs, on your Windows PCs. And uh, VirtualBox allows us to do this in um, a virtual environment, in a virtual machine, instead of um, making it dual boot, which uh, once I saw the, all the possibilities, I realized that the dual boot option was probably going to look different for everyone and I foresaw a lot of debugging issues so I thought it'd be easier for everybody to just work with a virtual machine and go from there unless you have very resource challenged computer in which case um, you might want to try the dual boot installation so to get virtual box uh, you go to virtualbox.org slash wiki slash downloads and that looks like this and we are you know going to be do uh, downloading one of these binary packages here if you have a windows computer as your if your regular computer is windows you'll download this i downloaded this for a mac um there are ones for linux hosts solaris as well i'm guessing there are none of us doing solaris maybe there's a linux linux person out there um already and they want to do this if you already are on linux um if it's already Ubuntu, you don't need to do this, but you already knew that. So, uh, download uh, your your uh, VirtualBox installer. Um, for me, that looks like this. So, I'll open up that DMG file, and I will double click on the installer. Continue, continue, 250 megs of space. 
install, give it my fingerprint. And this installation is pretty quick. So bam, done. Close. Now in my applications folder, there is a VirtualBox app. So I can open that app. And what you'll probably see at this point is nothing listed here. Um, so I already have some virtual machines that were installed before. Um, and uh, the new installation of VirtualBox was able to recognize that um, that I already had those old virtual machines. But we'll install a new one anyways for this tutorial. All right, so um, the second thing, I, I'm recommending that for greater functionality, consider installing the extension pack from the same downloads page. So there's an extension pack that allows um, things like USB 2, USB 3 devices, disk en encryption. There's some other nice things. Um, you can do a, a shared folder between your virtual machine side and your host operating system. Um, so I use the extension pack and I recommend you install the extension pack as well. Uh, so if we download it, it's, it's a one, one download all, I thought that was the SDK. Um, this extension pack, all supported platforms. Download it, um, it's not very large. Uh, and it is here, so I'll click on that. You're about to install a VirtualBox extension pack. Yes, I will do that. Install, I agree to whatever they say. And I'll type in my password. Extension pack has successfully installed. Hooray. Wonderful. Okay, so I want to check in with with you guys. How, how are we doing so far? Is everybody able to to follow along with those instructions and get VirtualBox installed? Yep. Great. Uh, if there's anybody who wants me to help at this point, um, I'm happy to do so. Okay, so now we're going to um, install Ubuntu as a virtual machine. It's already listed here. Um, because I have installed it previously. However, uh, we'll install a new one um, just to show how that works. So you go to new and you name it something reasonable like Ubuntu 18. Okay. Um, we're going to uh, place it in you know, uh, the default is, I think, in your home folder under VirtualBox VMs. Uh, type of, of operating system is Linux. The version of the operating system is Ubuntu 64-bit. Uh, we will continue. Uh, oh, I already. Uh, folder already exists. Yes. This will be my dummy version. Dumb. Continue. Okay, we want to do at least 4096, which is like four gigs of RAM. 4096 megabytes of RAM. Um, if you've got on your host machine eight gigs, you can do four gigs for your virtual machine. That'll leave four gigs for your uh, host machine. Things might get a little laggy, especially if you've got a lot of stuff open on your host machine. Um, 
if you've got like 16 gigs or 32 gigs of RAM, um, then consider allocating more than four uh, uh, gigs to the virtual machine, but do at least four because four is um, really kind of the minimum that this is gonna work decently out. So continue all the default options here. So create a virtual hard disk now, create. The default is the virtual box disk image, VDI, which is what I'll use. And this is nice because it used to be, until recent versions of virtual box, that you had to pre-allocate the uh, hard disk size, the virtual hard disk size. Um, now you can dynamically allocate, which means that it's just gonna be as big as you need for um, your virtual machine, which is really, really sweet. Instead of taking like 10, 20, 30 gigs and like leaving that as empty space that you can't use outside of it, this dynamical uh, allocation is nice. So continue. 10 gigs is fine, 20 gigs is better, but um, I don't think anything in this class is gonna go over 10 gigs. This is the maximum size that you can go to. So it won't take 10 gigs right away, but it can take up to 10 gigs. Create, and now we've got a virtual machine. Doesn't have anything installed on it yet though. So we want to install Ubuntu 18. Ubuntu 18 uh, is Bionic. Uh, Bionic Beaver is the code name for it, or the short name for it. This popular Linux distro is fully compatible with the version of ROS that we will use. We'll talk about that in the next tutorial. Uh, it has uh, a long-term maintenance schedule, and that's what I mean. That's, that's what the LTS stands for. Uh, it's lightweight and free. So download the desktop version here. So it's the um, stable version of Ubuntu right now. So go ahead and grab that um, at ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. So ubuntu.com slash download slash desktop. And it is the this version here, 1804.4 LTS. So you can go ahead and, and click download. Don't download the 19 version or any other version, just this version. Um, so go ahead and download it. I have already downloaded it. It's about two gigs. Uh, if you know what BitTorrent is, um, see our, our alternative downloads. It takes about a half hour probably to download directly from the site, depending on network traffic. Um, if you use the BitTorrent one, then this is the version that you want. It will download much, much faster. But if you don't know how to do BitTorrent, don't, don't, uh, don't worry about that option. Just let it let it go for a while and, and download directly. So once that download completes, you'll have an ISO. And for me, that looks like this. Ubuntu 1804.4 desktop AMD64. Um, this is the x86 architecture, the one that I confident all of your PCs are using. Um, there are also uh, ARM versions that are available, um, but I don't think that those are things that you're gonna need to, to worry about. Um, so, just check in. I'm not seeing the screen. Are you, are you guys still seeing my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. I had the green thing around it, but it's not showing up anymore. In any case, uh, great. So we've got this downloaded and here. So what we'll do then is we'll go into our virtual box and we'll now have this virtual machine. And if we double click this or hit start, then it will ask to select a virtual optical disk file or physical optical drive containing a disk, start your new virtual machine. If you click the folder here, then 
Um, for me. What? I had to hit add and just browse it on my computer. Yeah. Oh, hit add. Oh, there we go. That's different than the dialogue I got before. So in any case, um, this is now here. Um, and Ubuntu 18.04.4 is what we want. So we open that, the file that we downloaded, um, and we hit choose. And then we start. And then it opens up the sort of installer there. Doesn't take too long. Okay, so under here we want to install Ubuntu. We want to do the English, at least I do. Um, under here, uh, what apps would you like to install? You can install all this. I actually prefer the minimal installation, um, which won't be as large um, and won't include like the office software and all that. Um, so that's my preference. Uh, also make sure that you install third party uh, software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware, additional media formats. Um, that's, that's a very helpful option. So the, both of those checked. Minimal installation is fine. You can do normal if you want. Now at this point, it's a little scary because it's like erase disk and install Ubuntu. It's referring to the virtual disk, okay? Assuming you're doing this installation inside of a virtual box, virtual machine, um, you're safe. There's nothing on the disk. You'll be fine. Um, I, uh, if you're doing this as a dual boot situation, then that's this is probably not the option that you're looking for. Um, if you're going to do this on a clean machine and you just want Ubuntu installed, this is what you're looking for. But realize you're going to lose your other data at that point. So be cautious. Um, great. I have not done the encryption um, and uh, I've also not used the vo logical volume management, but I think that those are nice options. I just have not used them. So use your own risk. Um, it gives you another warning about overwriting your disk and you just continue and I hope you didn't just screw yourself out of all your data. Um, I am in this region, so that's, that'll be my choice of time zone. Um, uh, I'll put my name in as, um, I don't know, Socrates, computer name Socrates Virtual Box, pick a username. Socrates is fine, and put in a password. I like to log in automatically. It doesn't 
doesn't require, this is a virtual machine. Security purposes probably should have my password to log in, but that's that. Okay. Now the installation takes a few minutes. So um, this process uh, depends on your machine's resources and what you have open and all that. So hopefully this will be pretty fast. I think it might take like five minutes or so. Um, so we're just gonna hang out. Actually pause the recording for now. Okay, so uh, installer is done. Installation complete. You need to restart your computer to use the new installation. Restart now. So it says to remove installation media and then press enter. I don't think you actually have to, but uh, I, oh, these are lagging a bit. Um, it gave a message that if you use an ISO, it removes it automatically. Okay, I think it's probably fine um, to do. I, I don't think I did anything to remove it. Oh, there we go, it's very, very slow. Um, you can like unmount optical drives in here. If you don't have a machine that's very laggy at the moment. I'm also running this machine learning uh, simulation at the same time. So um, I think that's part of what's happening to my machine. In any case, we're just gonna try to hit enter and see if it goes. Okay. All right, comes up with a nice, what's new in Ubuntu um, tour. Take a look at that tour if you like. Um, done. And now we're in Ubuntu and we're pretty much, uh, ready to start installing ROS and I'll do a tutorial tomorrow on installing ROS and getting that configured a little bit. But um, yeah, I'll give us, I'll give us all uh, a, about a day to get that going before I, I do that uh, tutorial. So um, let me just see, is there anything else? Uh, yeah. Um, the documentation for Ubuntu Bionic is available here. It's pretty um, well documented and it's the most supported version right now. So um, there's lots of good stuff out there. And yeah, uh, it's fine to install updates. So install now, it's fine. Um, so, go, so go ahead and get uh, that set up and um, yeah, if there are any more questions. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. yeah uh, is there any way you can uh, go to full screen mode for the virtual box? Cause... Yes. Yes. So if you uh, go to machine well, view, uh, full screen mode. So it's like probably control F for you, or maybe Windows F. For me, it's command F, I believe, to go to full screen mode. Mm -hmm. 
Are you guys still able to see that? Yeah. Okay. Mine's scaled, and I uh, have seen it. Yeah, I'm having the same thing. You have to hit uh, Control C to scale it to the full size of your window. Control C. I think it's right Control C. Always forget there's a right control. It's not working. Hmm. Yeah, uh, I had mine working before. It, it looks like it doesn't scale to the full size of the window if you're already in full screen mode. So you just have to leave it windowed and make the window bigger. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, there's also a seamless mode, which I haven't tried. I don't know if it works for Ubuntu or not, but that allows you to have windows of each operating system open at the same time. Um, I, I think there are also some machine settings that have to do with display. Um, and if you're not in, um, if it's not running, so if I shut this off, you get more options. So let's see. So I will turn this machine off. And then if I go to settings, display, um, you can enable acceleration. You can give it more video memory, which I think would probably be a good, a good thing for most of us to do. Um, the, there's the scale factor as well, which you can mess with. So if I go up to 250 or something like that, um, let's see what happens when I boot it back up. It's it's bigger at least at that point. Um, yeah, I mean, for me, I would need to go up to another, you know, to another increase. The resolution didn't necessarily get better, and that could potentially be changed in settings here. Um, I've, I haven't messed a lot with Ubuntu's resolution, um, but the uh, resolution, um, like I've done this with Windows with the virtual machine before, and you can mess with the, the settings inside the virtual machine and the virtual box, and between the two, you usually need a couple, a couple settings that are reasonable. Um, I have not seen play settings here, so um, yeah, I don't have I don't have a good sense of how to change that background devices. Oh, there we go. Resolution. Um, so, so my resolution is very low. So I'll try to increase the resolution.
So that helped. I don't know if you guys are still seeing this. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, the speaker now. Yeah. So the resolution got a lot better. Um, I might need to then bop out to my virtual machine and mess with the scaling. Um, so maybe what I'll do is I'll increase the, I'll do a pretty high res. I have a pretty high resolution screen. So I'll do a high resolution in here, which will make it probably too big for my screen in the scaled mode. issues here. I need to give this machine more uh, graphics um, hardware acceleration. But is there a way to copy paste lines into uh, the Ubuntu terminal? Yes, uh, it's control C and then it's control shift V into the terminal. Okay, thank you. You can also use the same clipboard for your virtual machine and for your regular machine. Um, they'll share the same clipboard. I haven't got it working, um, uh, for Ubuntu yet, but um, I've had it working with Windows before and it does work. Um, so, yeah, it's a nice feature. It's under devices, shared clipboard, bi directional, um, and drag and drop also bi directional. So, those usually do work. And then you can also add a shared folder between them. Um, and let's see, I'm going to. Shut down this virtual machine. Power off. And then I'll try uh, there we go. Then I'll try the settings again and I'll do my display. I'm going to do at least 32 megs of video memory. Probably should be 64 at least. Um, and then I'm going to lower this down to like 100%. And then I'll start it up again. Now it's very tiny on my screen, and I know that the resolution is probably not as good. But uh, I think now if I go into settings and I look at display resolution and I increase it to like pretty high resolution. Um, that gets pretty good. I think I could probably go up, see what happens. Yeah, so that for me is pretty good resolution. My screen is very high resolution. So, um, yeah, I can see everything just fine on it. Uh, if I go to full screen mode now, Um, that's pretty good for me. I mean, my it doesn't give me the full screen resolution, but it gives me close to it. Um, so, 
yeah. So that's one way to, you can mess with the resolution inside Ubuntu and you can mess with the resolution um, uh, with the scaling at the uh, virtual box level. Yeah. All right, so any anything else you guys wanna take a look at? Any other questions? Okay, cool. Quick question for you, actually. Oh yeah, what's up? Um, so I've had I, I had this installed yesterday. I was I've just been trying to figure out um, how to get the first tutorial working. Um, yeah, I'm having the Ross tutorial. First Ross tutorial, and I have an issue where it says that it's like catkin package uh, is either not on the path or not installed.